This is a great filling. This is one of my favorites. I call it Ojoy because it's a toasted coconut and cacao nibs. Okay. And so um, when you're filling the macarons, you just kind of scooch a little bit into the middle, leaving a little rim around the outside. Okay. And then you just throw the lid on it. You want to try matching it up? And then you want to just get the filling out to the very edge. There. See how easy it is? <laughs> <laughs> you try. <laughs> Dora, tell us a little bit about how you got to be known as Madame Macaron. Yeah. Well, this is an accident that I started making macarons, and um, I had a girlfriend who started calling me Madame Macaron as I progressed <laughs> into making more and more. <laughs> So, so Torin, let's let's start with uh, the difference between a macaron and a macaroon, because I think okay. I know for me, I was confused when I got right. to know it, and I wasn't expecting to see this. I was, oh, really? You no. Know, so okay. I, at the beginning, I didn't really understand right. what it was. I, I right. Knew it was called something different, and then I was told that there's two different words, and they're really different things. So. Well, I'm not even sure that they really are two different words, but I think most people think of a macaroon in America as that coconut mound, sometimes dipped in chocolate. Yeah. And it's a wonderful thing, but it's completely different than a French macaron, which yeah. is um, just almond flour, egg white, and sugar. So it's kind of a technical challenge to create and a fabulous uh, taste experience. So, so how did you how did you get into creating these or making these on your own and becoming known as Madame, Madame Macron? Macron yeah. yeah, well, it's all been an, a nice little accident, and um, I uh, needed to supply macarons for uh, a chef who needed them for an event, and she brought the ingredients over to me and said, "Make them." I am not a pastry chef. But I do have a background in science, so it was kind of a nice little technical challenge, and it worked out, and everybody loved them, and I kept getting requests, so here I am. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So did you uh, did you study like some technical science? Because ma making these are it's a very technical art, correct? Well, yes and no. I mean, there's only three ingredients, so it's much to do with precision and technique, okay. and so I think. In a lab, that's where everything is at. So I think that's, you know, the basic parallel there. So Torin, how hard is it to make a macaron? What are what are some of the, the difficulties, and you know, what do you need to know before you make? So you have to have um, a really good eye for detail. Um, there's definite times to stop and start the different techniques, and it's really important to pay attention to what those timings are because that will affect your outcome. And you have to be very consistent and very um, precise um, in the whole process. So it takes a lot of attention. Okay. So you can't be on the phone or watching TV while you're making macarons. It, um, it's a good kind of way to, I think, um, it's almost a zen kind of thing, you know, yeah. like playing tennis or something like that where you just have to be so focused. Yeah. So it can be kind of a nice reprieve for people that are under a lot of stress and stuff like that. Yeah, I'd imagine you can, if it's, uh, if it's really technical, you kind of get yourself lost in Right, the in the process. And I think it's really, um, for me at first anyways, it was all about um, developing a flow, a, f a feeling of flow, a feeling of kind of being at one with your materials, which is kind of a cool thing, yeah. so. So uh, we're gonna pretend that we just made these macarons just for fun. Yeah. And this is a great filling. This is one of my favorites. I call it Ojoy okay. because it's a toasted coconut and cacao nibs. Okay. And so um, when you're filling the macarons, you just kind of scooch a little bit into the middle, leaving a little rim around the outside. Okay. And then you just throw the lid on it. You wanna try matching it up? And then you want to just get the filling out to the very edge. There. See how easy it is? <laughs> you try. No, I get to. Yep. Pull up. Yeah. 
How would you like to do a thousand of those? <laughs> <laughs> I hope I would do them all faster. <laughs> so how many do you have to do for like an event? Like is a thousand a joke or is a thousand like sometimes you have to I make have a thousand weeks where I'm making a thousand backgrounds. Oh, yeah. So not only do you need to be patient to make these, you need to have patience to make them anyway. Yes, you do. It's a it's a stamina thing. I would imagine it really smokes. And you do that primarily here in, in this yes. kitchen? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of timing and sequencing and stuff like that that has to happen. Yeah, so so if you made a thousand, or when you make a thousand, yeah. idea, how long does that take? Well, <laughs> I'm not giving it away on my trades. <laughs> no, that's fair. <laughs> I imagine it's more than eight hours. I go as fast as possible, let me put it that way. Good. Yay. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah. So you, you make these four four events and you do some, some A lot catering. of weddings and catered events and I do supply a few um, grocers and um, restaurants and Stuff like that um, but I teach these classes and that's um, really been a strong part of my business. Tara can you tell us a little bit about the experience of going through one of your classes kind of what is what does that process look like and how does that work? Kinda? Well I teach families I teach um, a lot of groups of people that are just friends um, bridal um, parties come in yeah. and do it it's really a nice way to kind of make friends with people without having to be too personal and too intimate. You're all kind of working on the same goal. And uh, I have a lot of different fillings that they can mess around with. So there's usually um, something that really sparks, resonates with everyone there, so. Yeah. So what's the what's the general experience like when, you know, people sign up and they, do they come to the kitchen, you go to their house or kind of how do it work? Oh no, it's here. So I meet everybody up front. Usually the classes, um, you know, I don't have a lot of weekends free, but I do have some weekend classes. And then usually it's uh, in the evening at six. So I wait for everyone at the front door. And then we go back to the commercial kitchen in the back of this beautiful venue um, called The Box. I guess I should say what it is. <laughs> but um, so we're a block away from the Fister Hotel. Some people come in from Green Bay and Sheboygan or Madison or Chicago for the weekend. Yeah. And then they have, you know, just a fun time with the family yeah. doing that, going to the museums and stuff like that. So it just takes a lot of different shapes. And I really work with people to see what they want. So when they're, so what is, so you kind of, um, when they come for your classes, mm -hmm. you're kind of coaching them through the process. Oh, they do all the work. Yeah, they're so. doing everything themselves. So I show them how to use a scale because that's how we're accurate and precise, right? And um, and then I show them exactly what the meringue needs to look like as we go through the process. And then there's the special way that you incorporate the dry ingredients with the meringue, and that's called macronage. So that's kind of specific too. And then you have to learn how to pipe, right? And then you have to learn exactly how to bake them. And then you have to learn the pastry cream. So there's a lot going on, yeah. but they so do all the work. About how long is a, does a class take and kind of what is that? Two to experience? two and a half hours. So, so they're, um, really doing, they're really getting to know. They go home with a whole bag of macarons. So um, sometimes I do team events and then, you know, that can look a little different. But Awesome. And, that, so, and it's not just for adults. You do this with kids, kids as well? So. And it's really neat. I've had multi-generational families come in. Um, and so the little ones and the older ones, it's a whole different process for the experienced bakers yeah. because it's not like making anything else. It's its own thing. So everyone's learning at the same level. And I think that's a really neat way of bringing people together. Yeah. Too. What are some of the difficulties or what are some of the values that kids can get out of uh, learning the process of making a macaron mm -hmm. and what they'll learn from your class? So we learned how to use a scale. If they haven't already achieved that, they go away being much more familiar with that. We use, um, you know, a lot of different techniques to make sure that the batter is homogenous. And, and so the classes are small so that I can really help people see what they need to see and observe what they need to observe. Yeah. Uh, so like specifically, you know, you said you were working with kids. So what are some of the things that 
the kids weren't haven't experienced yet that they'll take away from the class. Oh well, separating an egg white from an egg yolk, probably number one, and uh, you know, um, using a microprocessor and a mixer and a scale. Um, usually, they um, are very um, keen to master everything. Mm -hmm. So it's a nice way, they are so fascinated by the yucky egg whites turning into the beautiful meringue. Yeah. And then adding the color, and it's such a transformative process. So they really, I think it's a nice mix of science and art, yeah. and I think it kind of captures their imagination, so. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. What are some of the difficulties students come across while they're making the macarons? Oh, the, the mantra that I start class with is that patience is a virtue. So it's about taking your time and really um, not rushing through the process, but really trying to become um, involved in the details, right? And then um, the excitement part of it is that they get to go home with their own batch of macarons. They're so proud of them. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but patience is key. And I think patience is key for learning so many things. So, I mean, it's always the devil in the details, right? And uh, so this is a nice way to kind of make sure that they realize it may not be absolutely perfect, but it takes time to master the details, right? Yeah, yeah and it's a cool way to experience learning that lesson too, because they get to eat. Right, right. They, right. Eat they always taste and, good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You said they're really excited after. I would imagine you, you get to observe um, kind of a, a cool transformation of either, either emotion or you know, yeah. self-esteem building. Right. And yeah, self-esteem for sure. Um, a lot of people come in very nervous and then they come out feeling like, you know, I've conquered the world. And um, so that is a wonderful thing to share with people. And I think the macarons on, on the whole just lend themselves to that. It's not me, it's the macarons, you know, but, but it's sure that it's nice to be there. But I just know that people love macarons. They're gluten-free, so I think there's that attraction. They're circles of joy, you know, they're just little colorful things that make people really happy, and so they, they're just intrigued, so. There's really an opportunity to, you know, experience something together and build a relationship where, you know, if you're uh, doing a pe pedal tavern or doing something like that. Yeah. It's not necessarily as intimate. Yeah. There is definitely, um, a lot, I have a lot of father and daughter people come and take the classes or mothers and sons. So there's kind of a, it's a gender neutral experience, I think. Um, but, um, and it's not so much about being big or strong or smart or powerful. It's just about mastering these silly techniques, yeah. you know. And so it kind of levels the playing field for people. Yeah. Which can be really powerful mm -hmm. when you're trying to build relationships. Yeah. yeah. So Tori, can you tell us a little bit about kind of how you, you know, came to be Madame Macron? Because you said you, you studied science and you, yeah. were, you, know, you were doing some environmental science work in college and then you transitioned into, right. somehow transitioned into being a professional baker yeah. and you know, doing something very specific. Yeah. So how did that happen? So um, I did... I did study science in college. I never worked as an, in the sciences. I became an interior designer pretty quickly. And so um, I really love color, texture, and form. Okay. And so I managed um, interior design shops and stuff like that in Chicago. Nice. And um, well, really yeah, I, this, you know, that's my passion. Yeah. Um, so this just happened to come along and it's working with color, texture, and form. And, yeah, for sure. um, <laughs> So as I found myself underemployed and of a certain age, I decided, I think I need to kind of put the pedal to the metal and come, came up with this. So that's, that's awesome. all it is. No, that's, that's inspiring. I love, I love hearing stories of kind of how people, you know, were you know, in a position and then they decided that they were going to take control of right. the circumstances and make yeah. something positive yeah. out of it. So that's, that's really cool. And there's definitely color, texture, and form. Related. Right there. <laughs> that's the whole thing. Can't miss it. That's awesome. Um, so, you know, I really appreciate you sitting down with us and sharing. Yeah, thank you. Sharing thank you. The experience of how you know, macarons are made and the classes that you offer. So mm -hmm. if, if people want to get connected with you and learn more about your classes or learning about your catering business, kind of how would they do that? Um, I have a website, um, macaron, M-K-E. 
so M-A-C-A-R-O-N-M-K-E dot com. And um, my um, email is MadamMacronMKE at Gmail. And so I really work with people very personally about both uh, what they want for their macarons um, and also the classes. So I just kind of make it all work. And is that the classes are booked right on your website as well? Um, yeah, it's just best to shoot me an email. Okay. Yeah. Well, again, I really do appreciate Thank you, you sitting down with us and yeah. sharing, sharing with us your story. Enjoy your macarons. <laughs> Thank you for watching. We strive to bring you the very best family law content, stories from our communities, and insights into building a healthy and strong family. Please leave your comments below and tell us what you think about what we're sharing.